And to discuss more on the highlights of the CBN's governor's speech, I have economist Ubona Ukuku joining me from our Abuja studios. Good to have you join us, Ubona. Now, let's start uh, first of all with this. Uh, quarter two and quarter three GDP reports reflected growth rates of 2.1, 2.28%. We've seen a rise in manufacturing index. And at the same time, we've seen inflation also going higher, external reserves dropping. With this mix, do you agree with the CBN governor that we've seen some economic development and although slow, but do you think that the excuse of structural constraints is fair enough? Yeah, it is, uh, it is quite fair to look at it from that point of view where the central bank, is co the central bank governor is coming from because whether you like it or not, I always say this, it's as simple as this. What happens to every economy depends on what the monetary and the fiscal policy managers do. Now, if the interventions coming from the monetary policy end is not directly supported from the fiscal monetary activity, it would definitely, you know, it will actually look um, imbalanced. Then if, peradventure, this improvement and the advice coming from the MPC is being adhered to by the fiscal uh, policy managers, you will begin to see growth and then those structures will now begin to fuse itself into whatever interventions that the, the central bank governor or the central bank has been pushing out. Mm. So now, I totally agree with mm. the central bank governor on that, on, on that, on that prediction. Now, Ogona, GDP growth rates, according to the governor of the CBN, it says that ought to be at uh, 5% and headline inflation should be between 6 to 9%. But do you think the CBN, our Economic Advisory Council, and a whole lot more have been aggressive enough to run after these figures? Because we've always seen that we make our projections, but we always fall behind. Yeah, the truth about the matter, I must say, it, since, um, since um, President Mohamed Buhari came into power, I only say that we just started growing our economy. Nevertheless, because before now, all we've just been doing is we've been living in a bubble. And the reality is, until you begin to do practical things step by step, look at, we're still even talking about building roads in Nigeria. Because everything, well, everything you know, adds up together for an economy to grow. There are a lot of sectors that must come together. It's the fusion, it's that, it's that confluence of different sectors of the economy that will bring about the economic growth that we're talking about. So I believe that principally, the, the leadership of this present administration have actually brought us back to reality. It's, I call it reality check. For us, what are the things that we've done, we have done with all the monies we have made as a country all this while? We really haven't done much. So now we have started to build an economy. Now we're talking about roads, we're talking about rails, because, I mean, you can't move goods and services from one point to another without you going into prayers because, you know, the logistics system is not working. You don't have roads to the farms. You don't even have um, the, the subnational supporting whatever programs that the government at the federal level you know is involved in to make sure that we grow this economy everything you see that happen in all the countries in the world I see they are always deliberate they're always planned and when you don't plan you will fail definitely so I believe that the leadership that they are bringing right now will actually bring about all that we've been talking about since diversification has just been something that everybody pays lip, lip service to Every year, everybody talks about diversification. But for the first time, I have seen us begin to get, get it right because now we, can, we are now beginning to produce what we eat. You know, yes, it's not easy. Yes, the price will, prices will go up, but it's normal. But as soon as you begin to have surplus in the market, that's when you now begin to see prices begin to drop. So I believe for the first time, we're beginning to get it right. So I am, I'm, 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 I'm standing behind whatever it is with the policies and the directions of the government as, it's, as we speak now. And as part of getting things right, it's important that we also follow through with data, projections, and a whole lot more. Now, the CBN has said that we'll possibly see about 2.5% growth rate come 2020, talking about the GDP growth rate. And IMF says, well, we should expect 2.1%. Which of these figures seems to be a closer reality? Because the IMF has also warned severally as to the debt crisis that we've had in Nigeria. Look at our external reserves. The reality is quite harsh, staring at us in the face. Yeah, because you see, if you have programs in place, that is actually what happens. The IMF, yes, they can speak from their own research that they've done. And then the central bank also, they've carried out detailed research. And then they also have programs that they are 
currently you know uh, you know uh, working on programs that will begin to yield you know results let's say from 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 the first quarter of next year for example you know lo look at where we are when it comes to loan to uh, lo 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 loan to deposit rates which has increased to 65 to 60 percent which the the bankers committee and the central bank they are still working on to see how they can increase it so we have a lot of money going into the real sector the support for agriculture that is going on the interventions the anchor borrowers program look at a lot you know the, the bumper harvest that we're expecting you know at the end of this year and then first quarter of next year these are the things that um these are the things that the IMF need to also look at to see that we are going to go beyond whatever projections that they've made. But nevertheless, having said that, I also believe that any which way it can fall between 2.2.3% both ways. is either we get to 2.3% or at the end of the day it's going to be a win-win situation for everybody mm. as in when it comes to predictions. But I believe that we are in the right direction and then whatever it is that we are doing here would actually still, you know, you know, we, we'll, we'll have the offshoot is what we are looking at when we're making our projections. Mm. And as one of the highlights too by the Central Bank of uh, Nigeria's governor in his speech, he also said, well, we've seen a drop in the percentage of non-performing loans from at about 14.7% earlier recorded in January 2017 to under 7% as of this month. You earlier talked about the loan to deposit ratio, but do you think these figures is enough to drive loans and credit to the real sector? Likewise, sustaining the loan to deposit ratio of 6 to 5%? Yeah, it is. It, it, it's, it's a possibility. Everything you see is a work in progress. The banks know that they need to lend, but the issues that they've always had is how do you de-risk some of these loans? How do I give loans and then the people who take these loans, the depositors who take these loans, realize that there are other people's money that the money has to return? Then again, some of the, uh, uh, the, 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 the borrowers also have some of the issues, the uncertainties that happen within the system. So it, talks, it, it brings about you know, being a bit prudent you know, service, you know, in a, in a, in, so that you'll be able to service some of these loans. So I, 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 think, I, I think it's a work in progress, like I said, but is that these are things we must take charge of. These are things we must make sure that it begins to happen. So that it becomes a learning curve for those who want to enter into the market and then the system begins to grow. And talking about learning curves now, we see financial inclusion still facing a whole lot of issues. How do you think we are supposed to improve on our payment systems as well? See, it's a two-way thing, yeah? Yes, we have had a lot of investment, about $400 million being invested in, in the support infrastructure to support you know, those services like online banking and everything. Now, until you have more people, because the chicken and egg thing, mm -hmm. those who invest in this need more people to play so that you can share the cost amongst uh, you know, more people so that the, 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 char the charges won't be so much on individuals or, 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 or or those who are participating. So what you do is you drive and make, you know, push more people into that net where they will begin to use those services so that it will be easy for them to now, you know, make their monies back because these are huge investments that, will, you know, that will be going into, you know, those support infrastructure. Mm. And what more would you, would you also say will take to build a strong, sustainable growth model for Nigeria? You take a look at Brexit, you take a look at the US-China trade war and its implication on uh, global emerging economies. Global GDP at the end of this year is anticipated to fall to 3.0%. Uh, Africa's growth is also expected to remain flat come next year at 3.2%. How do we create a model that works uniquely for Nigeria, understanding the external realities, but we still have enough cushion within? Okay, let me let me answer your question by you know using the uh, the the my primary physics where Isaac Newton said everything remains at its present rest state until a particular force is applied. Now it comes it, it plays out in everything in life, even plus the economy. There has to be force. When I say force, I mean okay, just like the border closure. That's a force on its own because until you begin to do things differently, you cannot expect a different result. Now, we have to also begin to look at how do we get the, those are the subnationals to, on, to, to, to come into whatever plan that we have at the federal level. Now, because if we're talking about diversification, 
those are the those are the state are the states at the local government need to know what their role is what are they supposed to be doing at this point in time yeah farm to market manufacturing farms to the manufacturing hubs these are things that they need to know what they're supposed to do are we supposed to be are we supposed to still be talking about doing uh, vip toilets in schools when we're supposed to be talking about getting roads access road you know to the farm gates and all of that so those are the kind of things we should have there has to be a, there has to be a sit down we all have to sit down and then agree on what role each and every one of us will be playing as far as this economic growth is concerned then again that's something that the, the central bank mentioned which is very critical during the MPC, the last MPC meeting, which is getting the, 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 the pension fund managers to look out, look away from just, you know, you know, investing in government securities. There has to be a system that will work, which, you know, it, which has to start from having um, a, an indexing of the level of people who are getting into in, who are getting into this pension scheme. Now, if you do that indexing, it will help you know those who will be cashing out in the next 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. For me, those are free funds that you can take advantage of to put into agriculture, to put into you know, higher risk investment that will give you higher returns. Then you have to also discuss with the owners of these funds. For example, anybody who gets employed, employed today will not need the pension funds he or she, or is who or she will be contributing to the next 20, 25 years. Mm. So you can actually have a conversation with the person and say, your funds that you're contributing, can we use it, can we invest it in a higher risk you know, transaction, which will give you a higher yield, instead of just using it to you know, put, you know, put those f funds into you know, its government securities, which okay. is like, you not know, being very creative. So we need to be creative. That's what I'm trying to talk about. OK. Here. Now, Ubona, one of the projections by the city and governor is also that we are expecting uh, global oil uh, supply to hit as much as 2.4 million barrels. Now, we also see declining commodity prices, which is also expected to affect key export markets like Nigeria, Ethiopia, South Africa. You earlier talked about the gains of uh, the border closure, but in terms of value addition and building our exports base, how do you think we have a clear plan? Of course, we do. We do have a clear plan. In terms of value addition? Oil, we have value addition, of course. That's why, see, the federal government is trying to... That's, that's what diversification is all about. Because your raw material strategy has to be in place. Now, adding value is the next level, which is having factories or, 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 or manufacturers who will take, you know, take advantage of those raw materials that you have. There's this small adage you know, they use in, um, in, in South America, which says a large expanse of land cultivated without a manufacturing industry is just a forest. And the other way around, any big factory without a farm that will support the raw material supply strategy of that, of that particular factory is just a scrap metal. So be that as may, it's something that has to work hand in hand. Now you have your raw material uh, 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 support strategy working. You also have to have an advanced technology, sector specific advanced technology input when it comes to manufacturing and your production line. So this has happened. We, we can see examples of that happening in, in, in the tomato paste industry, which is happening now in Kebi State, you can, or Kasina State rather, and then Kanu State. Then you can see the rice processing going on with the Anchor Boras program, and that's you know the scheme itself, you know supporting you know the agro the the, uh, the out growers and then those who are going to take advantage of the the, pro, the produce so but it's still it's, 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 it's a long journey for us we still we still have to be patient because we have not gone anywhere like i said we just started growing the economy okay. we just started what we ought to have done ever since well we began, hopefully you know, we take a, a whole lot of cues from 2019 and then replicate the necessary reforms talking about 2020 thank you very much for your time it's been a pleasure speaking with you Ubona Ukuku. Well, 